Welcome back to Alt Majority. So happy to have you here. I'm Shay. And I'm Shannon. Thanks so much for joining us, uh, us on our channel. Um, on our channel, we talk about spirituality and spiritual awakening and law of attraction and just generally how to live a beautiful, happy, best life possible. Get to your highest timeline. That's what we're going for. That's what we're going for personally. And that's what we're going for with you. Yes, absolutely. So today we are going to talk a little bit about our spiritual awakenings, um, things, tools that have helped us along the way, books we've read, movies or documentaries we've watched, um, things we've done to help support us on our divine, in our divine plan. Um, yeah, so let's get into that. Yeah, one thing that I think is so cool about our conversations and our podcast is that we have this generational divide. I am 52. I've had a lot of different experiences in life. And actually the spiritual awakening that I'm going through right now is not my first. Mm -hmm. But then you are my daughter, who's an 25. entire generation after me. Yeah. You're 25. And so, oh, wow. It's like, you're 25, I'm 52. Just saw that um oh, wow. I love the universe so much just because we're going to talk about the synchronicities we'll definitely get to that and what that looks like but um I love that we have these two different perspectives on really what we're going through at uh, different ages it means something different to you you process it differently at different ages so I I really am excited actually to hear our different perspectives on what it's felt like because our experience has been really bound together. This last spiritual awakening, we really started it together mm -hmm. and we're really riding it together. So I really, um, I love the really the thought of how it has unfolded differently for both of us at the same time in our different generations and our different periods of life, uh, in our mother daughter relationship, yeah. you know, curious what it's like for you to experience this with your mother where I I actually this is like the joy of my heart to experience this with you honestly like oh that's what it feels like it feels like part of my life purpose for sure but it's absolutely joyful for me to connect with you in this way and to go through this with you it just it feels beautiful <laughs> well for me it feels like I um manifest myself a 24 seven access guru. <laughs> it's like any questions that I have about the universe, I really feel like if I come to you and we put our heads together on it, we can figure it out or we can transmute We can it. figure out where to look or where to go. Yeah, yeah. That's really kind of, I agree what it's felt like. So let's kind of start sort of at the beginning ish. Okay. I have to back up. Yes. And I'm very interested in asking when is the first time you ever remember yourself getting into meditation? Okay, so the first really time I remember meditating, I was definitely in my early teens mm -hmm. when I started doing that. Uh, and I can't really recall where I picked it up even. Honestly, I don't know. But I used to go through this exercise where I would picture the whole room was full of this pink air. And I would just close my eyes and slowly breathe it in and picture the pink air actually like cleansing my body and my energy as I drew it into my body. And then I would exhale, what would come out would be like a darker color. Mm -hmm. And then it would just slowly get sort of faded into the pink and it would just um, cleanse that as well. And it would be this cycle of breathing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, um, that's really the first time I was probably like 13, maybe 12, 13, 14 when that, when I remember that, but I was pretty, um, spiritual before that. And this is where it's hard to sometimes like parse out your own childhood experience because you're the only one that experienced it that way. And we tend to feel like everybody went through what we did but no, I'm finding out, nope, <laughs> that's not the case. Um, I remember um, there was a real, I don't know, kind of traumatic, pretty sad time in my life where right around age um, six, seven, eight, 
And I have um, a good, just really, really clear memory of um, trying to sleep at night and just feeling lonely and sad, basically, and having what I at the time called Jesus come and hold my hand. Literally, I felt his hand in mine and I felt his presence like soothing me to sleep uh, right around that age. And where I got Jesus from was because my sister had actually brought me to this different church. She's kind of always been a seeker also. And she brought me to this church and they were talking about Jesus. So Jesus just seemed like a safe um you know, like loving basically is how I was presented with it. So it's probably why I manifested it or thought of it that way. Mm -hmm. But I knew that I had this being who loved me and cared about me. That was not something that I could physically see with my eyes, but I could sense him. I sensed him really clearly. Um, and I felt his touch, honestly. So um, I started um, having those experiences real, real early. Like I said, I have no idea. I don't remember what, where, and when I picked up meditation in my early years. I don't know. Um, but um, somewhere in my early 20s then, I became a Mormon, which was another kind of definitely a, a different type of spiritual awakening that I went through at that time. Um, it was definitely something I did for a purpose. I'm no longer Mormon anymore. Uh, I've been away from that for about 10, 12 years or so, somewhere in there. Um, but that spiritual awakening was really meant to teach me something else. And that's where I really feel strongly about the different awakenings and realizations and cycles that we have in our life are really meant to teach us something for that time. Everything in divine timing. <laughs> right? So the things that I learned at that point um, were meant for me. And I was extremely spiritual, um, extremely um, connected to energies and the universe and spirit. I mean, can you tell us a little bit more about like what that looked like for you being a Mormon? What did that, what was the spiritual connection? So what were yeah, well, you were doing? One thing about the Mormon church is they talk a lot about spiritual gifts and how everybody has spiritual gifts. And they talk a lot about connecting with the spirit. They really say the Holy Ghost is really kind of how they put it. But because they are a church that has that as something within it, yeah. meaning the members can have spiritual gifts. They can connect to God. They can connect to the Holy Ghost. They can connect to um um, the spirit in whatever way, it really kind of allowed me um, some room to actually be able to have that as something in my daily experience that wasn't too weird for the people around me. <laughs> Does that yeah. make sense? <laughs> because when, and a lot of times when I'll talk about talking to spirit or feeling intuitions or feeling, getting visions, getting actual visions, of having prophetic dreams, all of that stuff that has happened to me in life, speaking to the dead, all of those things, all of that was kind of um, accepted as a potential spiritual gift a person could have. So it was always, um, I always kind of talked about it in a more religious context. Um, when I was talking about the, all of those experiences, like I, I definitely had a just... I, I mean, years worth of um, inspirations and dreams and visions that really guided my life and really taught me things about myself and the universe and um, my interactions with others and who I am and all of those things that occurred were real and quite intense and quite um, impactful in my life. And although eventually I got to a point where the Mormons and I no longer vibrated at the same level. I, I actually didn't need or want what they were um, offering any longer. Um, I went to a different cycle in my life where I actually, after I got out of the Mormon church, I um, went through a cycle of sort of not, 
not being spiritual for a lot of years and it felt like a giant hole <laughs> in my body. I actually really um, just struggled where to go, struggled where to find something that actually felt right and it felt like it fit me and it felt like truth because I, I feel like as I've gone along my spiritual journey in life, a lot of times when I'm hearing what's like spiritual truths, it's like a remembrance. And yeah. I don't know if you've had that experience too, but it's like a remembrance. I remember that. It hits so yeah. true. And it's so obvious that you're like, yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. And that's what a lot of it has felt like over the years. Yeah, of course that, of course that. But we go through these cycles where we're able to peel the layers back on ourselves more and more and get to the point where we've peeled it to the core of ourself and we understand things like how we create our entire existence through the power of choice <laughs> and how I can't blame one single person for any single thing that's ever happened to me. Actually, it's my job to forgive and become love. You don't get to that um, just in a sudden moment. You get to that in a, a layering of experience, of an unfolding of experiences. So it's like that. So I feel like I, because I had all those early spiritual experiences when I, I was young, I know that that's just part of my path here on earth is unfolding and uncovering the spiritual path the one that I've laid out for myself in this lifetime, the one that I'm supposed to walk. So we have to be real patient with ourselves when it feels like um, uh, others might understand more than us. This is where we can't compare mm -hmm. or others might have a farther, might be farther along in their path or might have a, you, we look at others and we're like, well, they get it. How did they get it? How come they're so happy? Um, they don't. Um, they don't have any different, um, traumas and, or they do, they, all of theirs are different, but they don't have any different life experience, human experience than you do in that they've come here into this life to grow and experience things, which includes things like traumas and sadness and grief and all of those things that pile up. It's just, just how, how do we respond? And I think that that's part of what our spiritual path is. Is yes. this, it's, it's the path of figuring out how to work all that out and respond and still become love and be love at the end of the day. I love your story so much because it is just like um, a movie in front of me that I get to learn lessons like secondhand from. And so I just want to recap and then again, ask you more questions. So as a young girl, you were exposed to Jesus from your sister and that kind of led you into feeling spirit then. And then as a teenager, you started meditating on your own and then early twenties come, you become a Mormon and then you leave the Mormon church and you have a period of almost darkness, right? Yeah. It has then now led into this spiritual awakening. And I just want to talk a little bit about how those periods of darkness are also for us and not happening to us, but happening for us so that you can emerge from that. So just what was your life like then? Like, how can you compare and contrast now? And then what were kind of like the symptoms of your life, if you will, um, during that time? And what were your biggest takeaways from that? So when I was, um, what I would maybe think of as kind of my spiritual height when I was Mormon, when I was really at a place of just peace and happiness and contentment with it. And I was getting every single thing I needed out of it. Okay. Um, what that felt was just a, there was a lot of kind of self-acceptance that was happening. There was a lot of just, you know, realization that just the small things like like service to others were maybe what we were here for. Yeah. And it was just a really, um, a time in my life where I was learning to be a human. I was learning to be a mother. I was serving my children. I was serving my community and it was a really peaceful, beautiful time in my life. 
Um, eventually, as I broke broke away from that, it came down to what often it is, is that you'll find things that come up against um, um, something that you want, right? Like, um, and what you really want is like to be seen and heard and accepted and loved and all the things, okay? So we all want that. When we start to not get that for whatever reason out of our experience, we start to question, well, why not this or this? And like I was talking about, maybe we'll do some comparison and we'll look around and why can't we be happy like that person or they look like they have it all, whatever it is. Um, but, but really we're starting to feel something's off. Something's off in our vibration. We're looking for something different. And I'm no, I'm no different than anybody else in that that's what kind of happened. And um, as I experienced that, basically what I ended up showing myself, and this is what we do. I showed myself a bunch of contrast. I showed myself a bunch of things that I didn't want. I did this through creating a crisis. And this is what we do as humans when we're feeling something's off and we just know that this isn't it and I'm not getting it, the thing I want from this. And we don't know how to break out of that because we feel like, you know, we are just boxed in by other people's decisions and we feel, you know, different responsibilities or things, places that we've actually closed ourselves in, barriers we've put up for ourselves, limiting beliefs we put up for ourselves. So sometimes we'll call in a crisis to break those things apart. Um, sometimes we can consciously break those things apart. And actually that's what we're moving toward. That's what the whole purpose of our, I think our channel is about yes. purposely moving forward, purposefully deciding to choose different things rather than calling in a crisis. But you know, that's what we do unconsciously subconscious our subconscious pops up on us and has us do things that we don't um, we seems like we don't even understand so i call in a crisis for myself which then ends up showing me a bunch of things that i say well i don't like that i don't want that no not that yep. okay i'm out of here now i'm out of here now and um it's a it's definitely a thing of my own creation and i just also but i feel like the things that were bothering me and the things that were off were there all along. Honestly, they were there all along. It's just that my focus really wasn't meant for that at that time. My focus was meant for this other state I was trying to get to, which was a very basic state of self-acceptance and love. <laughs> just basic self-acceptance. Just a very basic level of I'm worthy of happiness. I'm worthy to be a happy being. So is this making sense? What I'm even, I, I, am I even answering your question at this point? It, yeah, you're yes. answering your question. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like you create the crisis, the things are in your face then. Everything's in your face then. Um, what you don't want, what you like, what you don't like, and then you're really forced to choose. Mm -hmm. So when I ended up um, leaving the Mormon church, I created a giant crisis. And it ended up really, I lost every friend I had. I lost my entire community. I lost my entire basis for living. Mm -hmm. And it rocked my entire world and it changed everything. But what I know is that I did it. Yeah, I did it for a reason. I did it because that was no longer serving me and I needed to get to a different place. So I created a bunch of suffering for myself that was utterly needless. Suffering for myself and others that was utterly needless. Had I been able to just look at my life, tell myself some basic truths about it and make more deliberate and conscious choices about how to live differently. <laughs> and I think that that's, that's really what a spiritual journey ends up being about at the end of the day. That's what we're trying to do is get to a better, higher place of, of existence, of happiness, of peace, of self-love, all of that. Right. So I like the zoom out, zoom yourself out. Right. So I needed to get to, I had been at a, a place of real spiritual high, what felt like a spiritual high. 
I actually needed to get to what felt like a real spiritual low where I'm like looking around life and saying, what is the point? Yeah. This can't be it. This can't be it. I didn't come here to an existence to like go pay bills and work all day. And like, do, you know what I'm saying? Like that can't be it. And I know that a lot of people get to that. And that's kind of one of the things that actually is starting to signal to you that, hey, you might be going through some type of a spiritual awakening, which yeah. is you start to ask yourself these questions like, what this is the purpose? wait a second, what's the purpose? <laughs> Please see our uh, video on what is our life purpose. But like, yeah. that's the type of thing that starts to happen. And that's where I was saying, I felt a big hole in my life. I felt a big gaping hole because I, I knew about all of that all of those spiritual experiences that I'd had. And it's not that I stopped having dreams and visions and intuitions. I just didn't know, know what to call them anymore. Yeah. I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know what was my purpose for having all that because previously I'd been pretty sure about it all. And I'd been pretty clear about what the purpose was. All of it was there to help and serve others. That's what I, that's what I knew. So right. That's what I've actually circled back to after I kind of went to the depths, which a lot of us will call those like the dark night type thing. Again, I'm doing it because I'm calling crisis into my life because I wasn't okay with some things that were happening. So I, therefore feeling powerless, decided to create crises to yeah. call out my power and to show myself my power. It's crazy what we do sometimes how it's so unconscious at times. We're so utterly unconscious in our choices where we just refuse to see um, things like uh, long-term consequence. We refuse to consider things like, hey, this might impact somebody else pretty strongly. We refuse because we're in a state of confusion or hurt or pain and we just want it to stop. So we do a thing to break it. We, we do a thing, <laughs> yes. you know? Which I don't, want to, I don't want to discount at all. Um, I'm going to link this book in the show notes, but I, I read this book, Yoga for the Dark Night of the Soul by Simon Haas, who just um, says basically that the dark night of the soul is another spiritual path that people choose. And yeah. it's easy to choose, right? Because of um, you look at the news and you look at all these things, the media or whatever crisis is is there and so it's a, it's a choice for people to be able to kick start their spiritual life is to bring themselves down to those depths yeah it's a choice everything is and we gotta we really gotta understand that so even though you might be saying to yourself why would i pick this miserable <laughs> you know like depression or anxiety why would i pick all that it's not that you're picking it in the sense of, I want to be miserable, but you're, sh you're trying to show yourself something. You're showing yourself something. Yes. Your reality is reflecting something, it, something from the inner because the inner is always going to be reflected in our outer experience. Yes. So when we go through those, those crises that, and, and legitimately people do things to us that, that we don't deserve and we don't yes. call, I want to call that out. Okay. I want to make sure I call that out right? We're in a co-creation with everybody. So we can't control every single thing everybody else does. But when we call the crises in, especially on a spiritual kind of level of like, what is my existence? What am I doing here? What is my purpose? We call sometimes those crises in to really show us because we refuse to see. And our higher self, our guide, the universe, energies, whatever you believe in, it doesn't actually matter. <laughs> what you call all that energy but um if we're here on a journey to really grow our soul to grow our existence we're gonna just have to know that these cycles of both, both spiritual awakening and spiritual kind of depths are going to happen to us and we're just if we can just figure out how to roll with it how to just flow with it how to understand that will be times of a these beautiful spiritual moments of awakening and inspiration and other times where we're just like, Oh, what am I, what am I even doing here? Um, then, then when we're in the lower ones, they're a little easier to take because we, we remember how we will be going back up. 
Yes. We will be, we'll get back up. We'll get back up there. And I think that that's part of what's happened to me as now I'm older, going through this current spiritual awakening. When I've had the depths, I have known. I can, yep, this will pass. Yep. yep. This too will pass. It's, and it's easier to see like, it when you can look back on the cycle. It's easier to see. And it's also easier to hold yourself and to ask for help from others during those times. Yeah, it is. So um, it's normal to have the moments of questioning and not understanding and confusion. It's a pretty normal human experience. We all go through it. We all go through those moments of not really being sure what we're even doing here. So the, the universe will push us in a, in a direction if we're not going to get there ourselves too, is the other part of it. And that's where we talk about those synchronicities where the, the universe will show us things sometimes. Sometimes we don't want to see them. Um, sometimes we do want to see them. And the process of like learning really the law of attraction is learning to focus on what you want and stop paying attention to what you don't want. <laughs> it's almost that simple. Yeah. It's almost, it seems easy when you just put it like that. Yeah. Um, but spiritual awakening when you start to have it the universe will show you over and over and over signs um that you're on the right path synchronicities you'll meet the right person at the right moment you'll see the right book at the right time you'll hear that song that reminds you of the thing you'll smell something that'll take you back to a place you'll have a conversation with somebody that you'll be like wait a second i was just talking about that with somebody else yesterday that's what spiritual awakening feels like when you're starting to go through it and the key to really keeping it and like getting the momentum going is every time you have those things happen you acknowledge you're like wow yes okay universe i'll take that wow okay i'm gonna read that book i'm gonna meet that person wait a second why am i even caring about that why am i listening to that I, everything that is for me in front of me is for me yeah. So I'm going to claim it. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to learn that lesson. I'm not going to blame other people for the things that happen. I'm going to say that lesson was for me. Yeah. I'm going to learn that. And that's really what it looks like. So how do we get there? It really depends on who we are, what are our circumstance. I mean, we can talk about kind of where we got to where we are now during this last few year cycle. It's been a few years now that we've really been on a spiritual kind of learning cycle again. Um, yeah, and I would, I would suggest that there was probably a time in your younger childhood that you were on a spiritual awakening type journey. You just didn't really see it. You're a little kid. Yeah. So my story really begins where we're Mormons. Okay. And we pray, we prayed, right? It's like everything felt sacred to me at that time. I remember I had this little necklace that said child of God or something like that on there. And it's yeah. like, I remember being in school and it was an acronym. It didn't say actual child of God. It must've said something else. It's, it was CTR and it's meant choose the right. Choose the right. Yes, yes, yes. That's what it was. I just remember being so this is when I'm what I'm, I'm school age. So yeah, five, six, seven, eight. I think we left the Mormon church when I was like 10, maybe. Okay. Okay. Um, so I remember just being in school, seeing, um, children act like a certain way. And it'd be like, I would touch my necklace. And it was like, choose the right. Like I, I could just like redirect myself into yeah. this other spiritual lane. Um, not knowing that's really what it was, but that's what it was, right? Because yeah. when we were Mormons, it was like, I wasn't exposed to swear words or like junk for my mind, body, soul. And so when I saw that elsewhere, I kind of intuitively knew that that wasn't for me. And I was able to like shift myself away from that. And then um, kind of in, in, the, in your depths was when my depths began right and I went through this period of really teenagehood being in like a dark space where I I didn't feel like I belonged I didn't feel like I was being cared for loved all these things 
And it was in college when um, I remember the first time I, I joined a sorority and it was my first moment of like feeling like I belonged, like I had a community of people who were going to have my back no matter what. That's a whole nother story of how that ends. But um, we are like mandated to go to certain events. And so we go to this event for test anxiety and it is my dear beloved professor, Dr. Bruner, who, who brings us through this mindfulness meditation. And I just like became obsessed. And you know, it was as simple as she had us consciously sitting in our seat with planting through our palms of our feet. And that was basically it. And paying attention to your breathing. And I remember everybody else being like, that was lame. Da, da, da. And I was like, I loved it. I loved it. <laughs> You're like, wait, what just happened? So then that really sparked this. Um, it began the momentum for like this mindfulness in my life. Like I can actually pay attention to these things. And I have control over how I feel just based on how I'm breathing. And so that began that. And then a couple of weeks later, I remember we were mandated another event. And it was Dr. Bruner. She did yoga with us. I absolutely loved it. It was my first time ever actually doing yoga. Um, it changed, it changed my life. And I remember everybody else being like, Oh, that was lame. That was whatever. And I was like, I absolutely loved it. It really got me in the zone. And anytime I do yoga, anytime I'm paying attention to my breath, it's like, I do create this sphere around me of safety, of love, of acceptance. And it really began at that moment with Dr. Bruner. So thank you, Dr. Bruner. Um, but then I was still in this space, in this community, in this sorority that um, wasn't really serving my mind, body, soul, actually. It was just a lot of like binge drinking, drama, mandates, like all these things. Um, so that slowly fell away, right? And it was during those college years where I was spending summers with you. So I spent two summers in a row with you during a period when there was no college classes going on. And that's when we really, really began awakening to just being the creators of our lives and like what we put into our bodies is what is going to reflect back to us as well so it was we said it on this channel so many times but if you haven't watched it yet the gut the second brain is just like such okay. a mind-blowing documentary about how connected these centers of our body really truly are and how if you pay attention to what you're feeding yourself how it can change your physiology and how it can change yeah. your perception of the world right and that really set me off on I wasn't doing yoga so much as just like really paying attention to moving my body every single day and so I got myself my body in a state of um clearness I suppose of really feeling good and then it was like anything in my life that wasn't serving me, suddenly I just saw it began to like drop off. Right. And it's like the sorority fell apart, right? And it was, I was given this series of decisions that was like, okay, continue forward and, and kind of suppress the feelings that you feel about it or release and be able to shine your light even brighter. And so then it was, I left the sorority. I met my partner, Peyton, who was such a bright light in himself. I started um, doing the physical practice of yoga. I started focusing only on things that were bringing me joy and everything else kind of fell to the wayside. I mean, I have since about 21, since about 21, so four years, yeah, I must have come to your house. Was it when I was 21? Was that the first summer that I stayed there? And then I stayed there when I was 22 as well. I mean, that could be. There was a couple summers. Yeah, that was just yeah, that like there was two summers in a row. Yeah. And we just all we did was validate each other. And I think that was what was so powerful about it was what we were seeing and hearing and experiencing. We're both. So it was, it was like so um. I don't know, impactful to both of us to be able to be like, yes, and that, oh my God, yes, that too. And we were both just like reading and reading. We couldn't stop. It was like, we got obsessed with reading and just like ingesting any information that had to do with like both preparing our body and vessel for like um, energy, universe energy. But honestly, it was just like anything we could do to, to learn more about ourselves. 
it was like how our body worked, how our brains worked. So we just started talking about the chakras and getting the chakra system opened up. And it just, it kind of went from there, right? It's and like, I, and I just want to say, it's like simultaneously while we're doing this, I still at the same time was still questioning my purpose. Why am I here? It was like this yeah. simultaneous of I'm learning all these things and I'm getting this momentum going. And I am just now pulling myself out of the darkness and into the light. And so not, I'm not suggesting that it was easy. Like it was that simple, like spiritual awakening happening. Everything fell away that didn't serve me. And now I'm on this spiritual journey, but it was this simultaneous balance of both of these things. And it's really, I mean, it's still happening now. I, you know, We're still in, yeah. ebbs and flows come and go. Um, but just what a beautiful journey it is. And when you learn the mindfulness and when you, are, are reading all of these things that are validating how you're feeling and giving you tools for your toolbox, it just becomes easier to navigate the darkness. It really does because the darkness is there as your teacher as well. It is just as valuable as the light. It just is all dependent on how you are perceiving things. And so when the darkness became something that was teaching me instead of something that was like scary, I shouldn't be here, I need to get out of here. That's when things really began to shift. And I was able to sit in the dark with loving awareness, just as I was sitting in the light with loving awareness. Yes, for sure, for sure. That's where we talk about doing the shadow work, getting, getting to your shadow and getting to a self-acceptance of all parts of you, the dark, the light, what we will call the good and the bad. Again, that's just our perception. A lot of times it's just labels and programming. It's not even real. Most of the time it's just somebody else's idea about what is good or bad. Obviously, there's some things that we experience that are pretty subjectively bad and good, but at the same time, if we consider everything is a lesson, everything is here to teach us, everything here is for us. And if we can just keep focusing on, on that progression, that's really where the magic lies, honestly. Because as we keep going forward, we keep learning more and keep, keep seeing more, we keep taking more and more responsibility for our life. We keep taking more and more power back into our life where we get to an understanding that we are the ones that actually create all of this. We're the ones that tell ourselves the story about what's happening. We're the ones that give us the commentary on whether or not it's good or bad, whether or not we're happy, whether or not we're satisfied. <laughs> we string a bunch of experiences together and we say, oh, okay, I'm satisfied with what happened. What happened is what I wanted to happen. So therefore I'm gonna call that happy. Or I'm going to have a bunch of things strung together that I didn't want to happen. So I'm going to call myself unhappy if that's the case. But you see how it's just a narrative. It's all yeah. just a story we tell ourselves. It's the things that we are willing to be aware of. So when you're talking about, you know, your journey and the different things, and then I saw this, and then we noticed this, and then we started moving our body, and then the energy was easier to see, you know, all of, all of the different kind of waves we've gone on this is a process i think we all go through subconsciously unconsciously or or awake or not right we're all doing it it's just how awake are we while we're doing it do we notice it do we notice our own behavior are we willing to notice our own behaviors and really take full and total responsibility for that and that's that's what the spiritual awakening journey ends ends up being about because you go through these different things like we were talking about the chakras I remember at one point I was just obsessed with opening my third eye and so I was just reading everything possible I could about it I was just like listening to podcasts where people were talking about it I was I was just going through all these meditative exercises and all these exercises to be able to open my third eye um which by the way when your third eye opens wow be prepared because there's a lot of information coming in there. Um, but like, what was the whole purpose? Why was I so obsessed about that? Why did I have that feeling that I needed to have that? I needed to focus on that. Well, it's just, 
that's the path that I had gotten to on my timeline. And it's like the question of why do you like what you like? Why are you drawn to what you're drawn to? Why are you, why did you suddenly, you know, um, have that reaction to the meditation and the yoga that your professor put you through? Why did you have that reaction while your classmate right next to you was like, that was lame. And like, it, what happened? And what it really know? is, it's like, like, when you said earlier, it was a remembrance. Yeah. Because I did these things and I, and these experiences, um, were gifted to me to like spark that remembrance in myself. That's what it felt like. Yeah. That's what it feels like when you go through that spiritual uh, awakening experience. It's like, wow. Okay. But like I was saying, I feel like everybody does a level of that. It's just how aware are they? How aware do you allow yourself to be? It's super easy not to be aware and awake. Yeah. It's really easy to get distracted by your human game. Yeah. It's really, really easy to do things like I'm going to, now I'm going to play a, you know, does a boy like me game or does a girl like me? Do people like me? And then my whole game becomes that. And I get all obsessed with, do people like me? What do they think about me? And I start comparing myself and I'm judging others at all times because I've been set up with a certain amount of, of beliefs that this is a, the right way to be or act or whatever. So I'm going to judge all others about it. I'm going to judge myself. It's, it's, um, getting off of that, <laughs> getting off of that, like that, that cycle of, of the human game of, because it's right in our face. It's what we deal with on a daily. It's what we're experiencing. So it feels really important, really important. I've had when, mm -hmm, go ahead. If we can just pull back, like you were saying, pull back a little bit, have perspective and just see what actually is important in life. That's part of what the spiritual waking journey is about. It's like, I've had this image um, since about 21, when we kind of began this thing, I remember saying this to you, explaining this to you. I just had this image of like all these tracks, all these train tracks, right? Some are below, some are higher, whatever. And you get to grab on to whichever one is serving you. So you never have to stay put on the, it's just, does a boy like me, does a girl like me game. You can come over here and switch, switch on and off. And I, it's, it's liberating. It's so liberating when you decide, when you consciously choose to leave one track and enter and enter the other. Yeah. I mean, we're just all in a process of constantly becoming more of our, ourselves, mm -hmm. more of us, more of who we are, accepting more and more of who we are as a being, loving ourselves more and more every single moment, every single time we grab onto something different to put our focus on. Um, think about that as a potential lesson to tell you how much you love yourself or not. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, sometimes real easy to grab on and pay attention to the things that are telling us we're not worthy. We can't do it. We can't make it. We're not good enough. We're not lovable. Really easy to pay attention to that stuff. But spiritual awakening is about understanding your divinity and knowing that none of that is real. None of the things that, you know, we spend our time caring about um, probably don't even really mean anything in in the, in the grand existence of things, you know, sometimes I will say to myself, is this going to matter to me five years from now? Is this going to matter to me 10 years from now? And if I can't answer yes to that, well then is that something I should be dumping a bunch of my energy into? Probably not. Yeah, probably not. And so the things that are important to us, um, that are really, really actually important to us uh, usually we don't notice until we lose them. And then we're like, wow, damn, I really liked that. I really wanted that. I really, really should have appreciated that in the moment. I really wish I would have paid attention to that more. I mean, it's the whole, you know, you lose somebody that you love in your life and you're just going over in your head about how you wish you could have done something different to make them know that you love them and you wish you could be, you could change something that would put them back into your life in some way, or 
maybe they've passed away and they're gone and you can't get that time back and you just beat yourself up over it and you spend time, energy, judging yourself. Well, two things about that. Number one, the past is gone. Let it go. There's nothing you can do about it. Second thing is tell people around you that you love them and that they're important to you when they are because this might be the last chance you get to do so. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's like, put your life energy into something you care about. Put your life's energy into something that has purpose. I mean, one thing I can say about my life is I've put my life's energy into things I care about. I'm really passionate about what I do. And I've put my time, my energy into that because I care about it. And it's allowed me to live a life that has at times made me look at maybe the uglier part of our existence, but also I get to see the, the beautiful resilience of the human spirit happen over and over in front of my eyes as I work with people as they're dealing with their traumas. I get to witness people's awakenings. I get to witness people love themselves, truly love themselves. And it's, it's a beauty to see. And it's a reflection of what I want to see back in my own life. So when I get to the end of it, I can look back at it and know that I did everything I wanted. I told every single person that needed to know something in my heart about it. <laughs> and I didn't hold myself back from things because I was afraid I would be judged or laughed at or rejected. I did every single thing I wanted to do in this life. And that's really what I feel like spiritual awakening allows us to do. It gives us that freedom to be ourselves, to get our mission on earth, what we're supposed to be doing here done. And if that mission is to learn how to love myself, then fantastic. Let me dive in and learn it. It doesn't have to be all of us aren't here to cure cancer, <laughs> right? All of us aren't here to maybe shift the world maybe what we're here is just to shift our own soul. So if I learn nothing else in this life, but to love myself, I, I won this game then. I won this human life then. And then I got this question from somebody asking, you know, how do we, how do we stay consistent on this path? And I just want to um, acknowledge that and say that for me, it's less about consistency and more about trust and surrender. And so I don't yeah. know how you want to answer that. A sense of consistency in that, yes, there are things that I do almost daily, but I don't do anything the same every single day. And so there's things that I've, that I've found that make me feel good that I know that are in my toolbox that if I do this, I know I'm going to elicit a certain feeling in myself. I know that I'm going to be able to connect a little bit higher all these things but it is less about the consistency for me and definitely more about just trusting and surrendering to everything that's unfolding in front of me yeah it's it's a um it's a not only a desire and a willingness to feed your soul it's a non-stop commitment to yourself to give yourself what you need so that's how you stay consistent is you refuse to do anything but nourish yourself. Yeah. Yeah. You refuse to do anything less than love yourself. And when you start to see yourself doing things that aren't loving yourself and nourishing yourself, pay attention and stop. Stop that. Get back to the things that you know actually nourish your soul. I mean, I, for a while there, you know, I talked about the universe was waking me up at 2 a.m., 2, 3 a.m for a couple years. Okay. Universe woke me up. And at first I was like, why do I keep waking up? Why can't I sleep at night? But I just, you know, I'm the type of person who gets a lot of information in. So I feel like the universe is talking to me. I need to listen. So I started to listen. I just started to listen and I started to get up and I just got up and I started to pray and I just started to wait and surrender and just wait. And I'm going to know when it comes to me and I'm just going to keep doing the thing that I, I know it feels right. And even though it's not, nothing's reflecting in my reality for a while <laughs> um, until I start to see what feels like a result, which a result basically just feels like, um, like a peace, like contentment, like a, okay, 
like a, um, I'm on my path. Mm -hmm. So how do I stay consistent is that I keep, um, I, I keep that commitment to myself to love myself and to give myself what I need, even if it's waking up at 2 a.m. to speak to the universe, because that's when it's quiet. And then when you have those things, when you keep following that commitment to yourself and you're just unrelenting, and it's like, I've said this to, to people a lot of times, imagine um, what you're going through. You see your best friend going through or someone you really, really deeply love going through it. Um, what would you do for them? What would you tell them to do? What would your advice be to them? Do that, do all that and actually do all of it. Yeah. Don't just say you're going to do it. Actually do it. Actually give yourself self-care. Figure out what your self-care looks like and do it. And, and don't stop doing it. Yeah. And make that your actual priority. Because here's the other thing. People will say, I don't have time for that. That's not real. You have time for whatever you put time into. You have time for whatever you actually want to do. Notice. Notice where you spend your time. Yeah. You have time for anything that you want in your life. You do. You make time for the things that you truly want to do. And you know this, you know, so make time for yourself. Understand that you're the one here. You're the prize. You're the one that's, that's, um, the important thing here. It's easy to give our power away to other people trying to please others or make other people happy. Stop doing that. Yeah. Stop doing that. We talked before about making the list of things that you should do and, and get rid of that, get rid of that whole list of things you should do <laughs> and start serving yourself, start honoring yourself, start respecting yourself, honor your boundaries, put boundaries up and hold them. And, and that's this, yeah. huge sometimes. And this is when you get to a point in your spiritual awakening when you realize that everything is just a mirror of you. And so the more love you give to yourself suddenly is the more love that you are seeing reflected back to you. Yes. And that is the most beautiful part about everything that you're saying is that when you are able to hold those strong boundaries, when you are able to give yourself the self love, well, suddenly things become easier because then you notice the people in your life are beginning to hold boundaries right you're, you're noticing that the people in your life or the things in your life are showing love and it, right. everything is just a reflection of you so anything that you want you give to yourself starts showing up in your world yeah right and you start to drop off the things that actually aren't important you know you start to really focus on what actually is important let me ask you this question you know, would you rather be right or would you rather be happy? Mm. And we pick right a lot. We pick right a lot. <laughs> I want to be right. I'd rather be right than happy. Where happiness sometimes includes things like forgiveness and letting things go. And I'd rather be right. I'd rather hold on to that resentment, that bitterness I have toward that person who did that thing. Um, I'm going to hold on to that because I want to be right. Yeah. Or I could let it go and I could forgive them and just, it's in the past, it's gone. And, and then suddenly I'll look around and I'll notice that I'm getting forgiveness. People are giving me a break. Yeah. Maybe I'm getting the benefit of the doubt now where I'm willing to give the benefit of the doubt out now where I wasn't before. So I wasn't getting it. Yeah. You know, it's, it's that it's, it's really, really owning the whole inner becomes the outer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And really, really taking charge of that and just which, acknowledging that you have the power. Which is such a strong reason why we wanted to start this podcast, right? So that you can um, begin putting these ideas into your body and allowing them to digest and to create a community of like-minded people who are on this journey together, because that is what makes it that much sweeter and easier when you have others who are going through it. Like we said, it's been such a blessing and a journey that we get to do together. That just makes it, I never feel alone ever because I know that if I, if I'm ever questioning something, if I'm ever experiencing a time where I'm sitting with the darkness, I can reach out to you, right? Tell you about my experience 
and right there is just community is so important to have and so that is the whole reason for this podcast so never feel like you are alone reach out for support if you need it that is an act of self-care in itself which is different from um sitting in a lack mentality and like boohooing about your life no this is more about asking for support when you need it and giving it to yourself by actually asking for it yeah and be patient and gentle with yourself I mean, there was times that we would be watching a documentary. We would only watch 10 minutes of it. We'd have to stop and process. Yeah. We, we couldn't even get the, get the whole thing in. It was like too much information. It was like, whoa, wait, mind blowing than that. No, no, no. So it was like, if you can only listen to five minutes of something and then you got to sit and process, just do that. circle back later, you know, yeah. be patient, be gentle with yourself. You can't learn everything at once. You can't know everything at once. Just take what's for you in front of you and use that. Get those lessons learned yeah. before you worry about how far are you getting or, um, you know, maybe I don't get this one thing or I'm having a hard time getting to this point, this spot. Again, that's like you just said. I, you know, we all do it. I still do it. I still will call you and ask you, hey, pull me an Oracle card. I need, I need something outside of me. I, even though it seems like I get a lot of it, I feel pretty awake. Yes. I actually know that this is just an, a spiritual awakening I'm having. I'm going to have another. Yep. I'm going to have more. <laughs> I'm going to keep having them um, until I'm no longer in this body. Yep. Because uh, that's just the nature of our existence. So you can fight it and then you'll have a bunch of crises that is going to pop up and, and show you the things forcefully, or you can go with it and surrender and flow like you were talking about and just allow the universe to unfold in front of you and respond. Like, I don't force anything in my life. I, I really don't. If I wake up in the morning and I go to my yoga mat and I don't want to do the thing that I usually do in the morning, I don't do it. If I wake up in the morning and it's like, I am feeling called to do something completely different than I normally do, I do it. And so the whole idea of consistency is just being consistently showing up for yourself. Yes, yes. It doesn't, it's not a matter of, I do these five things every day and that's what's keeping me on this path. No, it's right. Tuning in and really being consistent with giving myself exactly what it is I'm asking for and needing in any given moment. Exactly. It's honoring every moment of your life where some of the days I want to lay in bed and read yep. great. Other days I'm running around my lake. It it doesn't it doesn't mean anything about the ebbs and flows. It doesn't mean anything about me necessarily because I'm in a higher emotional spot one day or a lower one one day I'm still as amazing and lovable as I am even if I'm feeling down someday or even if I'm feeling up someday yeah that's yeah. the nature of existence so don't give up don't give up on yourself when you start to notice you're you're starting to awaken you start to notice the things around you about you you start to notice the lessons you start to notice why you're calling certain people into your life why do you have that particular job that you have? Um, why are you um, addicted to the things you're addicted to, whatever they may be? Pay attention to all that. Ask yourself, what does that mean? And at some point, you'll get down to breaking everything, every single thing down <laughs> and being able to be like, oh, okay, I'm going to learn something from every moment. And that's, to me, it's like the state of joy and bliss that you can just call yourself into. You can just put yourself into. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the whole point of it, to me, is just to, to, you know, learn and be and exist and have joy, serve others, be Everything loved. for you. Everything Everything's for you. I feel like, I don't know if we actually had a subject this week. I don't, I don't know exactly what we're going to come up for a title <laughs> for this episode, but um, maybe it's just really about, you know, everybody has a journey that they go through. Everybody's journey gets them to exactly where they're supposed to be. 
Yeah. You're exactly where you're supposed to be, listener. You're exactly who you're supposed to be. Enjoy and this moment right here. Right yeah. Here. Enjoy this moment. Enjoy it. Enjoy your life. Enjoy you. Be you. The world needs you. We need more of you. We don't need you to be somebody else. We need you. Yes. I love you. <laughs> and thank you for listening to this episode where, yeah, you're right. I don't know if we had a specific um, category this week, but it's exactly what needed to come through. And so I hope that you enjoy it. If you do, please share this with a friend, like, comment, subscribe. We put out videos every Monday, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we look forward to just serving you more with this divine knowledge that just comes through us. Absolutely. We can uh, also be found on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. And um, please, uh, please come back and join us anytime. We'd love to have you. Thank you so much for listening. Yes, you're loved, you're worthy. And we will see you next time.